Hey there comic book fans. I'm back with another video this week. Uh, this time we're gonna look at John Buscema's Silver Surfer Artist Edition. I borrowed this one again from a friend of mine. Um, which is going to work into a story a little later on in this issue because um, uh, well, I'll tell you that story when we uh, when we get to the issue. For, well, maybe I'll tell you the beginning. Here's the uh, Silver Surfer John Buscema Artist Edition. And this is, he also had, th these are the, uh, a, he just had a photocopy of the original pencils of issue 5. I'm not quite sure where he found it, but uh, there's some John Buscema pencils. Silver, here's Silver Surfer number five, and who shall mourn for him? Wow. Uh, this, a, a lot of people think this is some of John Buscema's best work, and you can see why. What a beautiful splash page. Oh, look at like Sal Buscema is doing the embellishing over John. Look at that, his brother. Some nice Fantastic Four action happening in the first couple of pages. They must have used this picture for something. Because I've seen that picture a lot of times. I don't know on what, but they must have used that for licensing. That human torch, he was always losing his flame and getting in trouble. Oh wow, what, some, some nice stuff. Shalabal! That, that John Buscema was certainly really, really good at figure work. And this Silver Surfer figure is no exception. I don't know if I've ever read this issue. I only read some of these. I haven't read this whole Silver Surfer series because I'm I'm not a fan of the writing on the series. It's a little too whiny for me. It's kind of Stan Lee at his most, uh, oh, humanity was so bad to us, whiny, whiny. And, but I've, I've, I've read, I've probably read about half the series and I've only looked through other parts. And these were all double-sized issues at this point too, so it was unusual for a comic, but to be so big and square bound. Wow, look at all those faces. Silver Surfer with a hat on. This is also back when all artists knew how to draw coats and guys in suits. I've noticed that nowadays, if you look at a lot of uh, artwork from the 50s, 60s, up into the 70s, I think because guys wore suits all, more often, they were drawn more often, and the guys really and guys really learned to draw them. But nowadays, I notice there's artists are since they're drawing superheroes all the time, they're very lacking in their knowledge of how to draw a suit. But John Buscema did. Hypno face. Ah. What a beautiful... Look at these gangsters. Wow. I love the face. Oh, who does that look like? That looks like a um, an actor. An old... Uh, an actor from this time. I can't think of his name, but that looks like him. But boy, no one... No one drew thugs like John Viesema. Just just take a look at that. Those guys right there. Beautiful. This isn't even... I, I'm even... That guy's giant. I'm even liking these panels that aren't very super heroic. Once again, suits in motion. Look how good he is at just getting this this trench coat in motion. And there's suits in motion too. And all the folds are... Folds and shadows that, that go there. A lot of... Like I said, a lot of modern artists, when you see them draw a fold, including me at times, fake these shadows in a way that don't make sense. I've, I've drawn a lot of bad suit shadows in my day. Because it's something you really have to uh, learn and study. Original top tier page of 17 was never inked. Oh, look at that. Change was made at the editorial level, then sent it a revision. Buscema redrew the scene, reflecting changes, then it was adhered to the art board. Oh, okay. Ah. But this was pasted down on there after there was changes made. Oh, it's neat that we can see underneath it. Let's flip through here. Wow, that's a nice panel, too. I'm, I'm liking the Silver Surfer in a trench coat look. It's working for me. <laughs> He's even got shoes on. Look at that. He drew some little shoes in there.
makes everybody wow the, the drawing i mean this this is this is the strength of these silver surfer issues is the john Buscema drawing that's what everybody loves in them generally I, i'm not sure I'm not sure if anybody is in love with the stories from this uh, series, but everybody loves the artwork. Little X-Men action there. Oh, is it The Stranger? I remember him. He's one of the uh, elders of the universe now, right? Isn't he The Stranger? Ha, <laughs> Silver Surfer in a Kirby-type vest. Wow, this, this is just really nice stuff. Surfer goes back and cat. Oh, so these even had some some notes to stand under the margins. Interesting. As he nears stranger on empty pop. I can't even read that. Nice. Look at that full full height panel there. And a great stranger face. I even like these little, these little that, that's all Sal Buscema there, all those little lines. I'm sure John sketched that in, but that's all inking technique. And that's kind of what's missing from a lot of comics today, is ink, inking technique. A lot of people don't learn, because so many comics are done digitally now, the technique, technique is different and a lot of the standard inking techniques have been lost. But you know these these lines in here is that you never see these like speed lines anymore these um, burst lines because it's not a technique that's used much. A stranger looking giant. Wow, there's a great figure. You know, not, look at all those hatching. Once again, that's a technique since um. Since the late 80s, when uh, triple cross hatching came came about, you don't see a lot of that type of hatching anymore, even. It's like now you get even more lines and some inking by the guys who still know how to do it. It's booby trapped! It gains his own built in defense. It's like he just saved Earth. There's an, that's another beautiful panel right there. Just that, that guy's head and his suit and the folds. Very nice stuff. Whoa, now we get into, what is this, issue six? Ah, here we go. This is the, this is the one that comes with the story. I, um, some uh, oral history of comics stuff. I act, uh, I borrowed this book from my friend who is um, Bob Wyacek. He's an he's been in a long time inker with Marvel and DC and whoever he you know he inked uh, he inked over Paul Smith's X Men and what was that the early eighties he inked over a lot of J R Junior in the nineties, but when he was in the late sixties when he was about fifteen or sixteen he lived in New York City then, and he actually went to Marvel, you know, just because he was a 16-year-old comic fan and wanted to visit Marvel Comics, and they let him up there and gave him a little tour. And it was um, Marie Severin. I, I guess this issue had just gone out, or was going out. Uh, issue 6 of The Silver Surfer. And Marie Severin told him a story about if you look at the drawing in this one, there's no silver drawn inside the silver. If you look in here, John Buscema always draw these these lines that made him look shiny. If you look back here, these lines in the Silver Surfer are what makes him look shiny. But in issue six, those lines aren't there because they were they were doing this all as a color hold. Look at this. See, there's no silver lines in here. There's, there's a couple silver lines there, and what a color hold is is all of this ink right here is the black plate. So everything on here um, is going to print in black on the black plate. If you want, it was it's easy to do now in the digital age, but back in the late 60s, if you wanted something to print just in color and not in black line, you had to put it on a, on a separate piece of paper. 
So, and then you had to take that separate piece of paper and make that into like, I think they were going to do these color holds in a blue. So all of the, all of the silver work in here was going to be done in a color hold in blue or I assume blue or some sort of light gray. I'm not sure what, but they ran out of time because that takes extra time too. So this issue printed without the color holds being done. So if you look at, you know, you see in the original art, especially that there's no, there's no shine to the silver surfer and the original issue printed this way too, because as, um, Marie Severin said, they just ran out of time because they, they'd have to take extra time and care, um, to do all this in color holds. And like I said, it would have to be on a separate piece of paper. They'd have to uh, photograph that separate piece of paper separately. It's like, it's a whole pro You can do that all now in a Photoshop document. Nowadays, there's you can put a color hold wherever you want because you just turn, um, like you could, you could just make anything in here in color in Photoshop these days. But in those days you couldn't. As a matter of fact, if you look at, um, there were some Doctor Strange issues drawn by, um, who was it? Oh, Terry Austin inked them, and oh, all of a sudden his name flew right out of my head. Uh, the, the guy who drew, uh, I can remember everybody else's name. Um, uh, Batman in the 70s um, that Archie Goodwin wrote. Ah, jeez, all of a sudden I can't remember his name. Uh, I'll, it'll come to me in a second, but around issue 50 of volume one of Dr. Strange, well, volume, whatever volume that was of Dr. Strange, because they, they relaunched it with a first issue in the seventies. And he did a lot of Dr. Strange's, um, special effects, spell effects in color holds. And it was hard to do. Wow. Look at that splash page. And that was hard to do even in the early eighties to do all those color holds. As a matter of fact, when I used to work at Marvel, I remember them them saying that uh, those issues of Doctor Strange have yet to be reprinted because they lost all the film of the color holds and they'd have to reconstruct it. So I'm sure all these color holds are lost too, because I've never I've never even heard about them until Bob told me that story about his visit to Marvel Comics in the late '60s. So I wonder what happened to all that. I wonder if the color holds were actually ever done. Because, like I said, they they would have been had to be done on a separate piece of paper, and you would think they'd keep it with this piece, but no. I guess they were. Look at that's, that's the Silver Surfer looking kind of blank. He got a little cheekbone in there, but all the and look at his fingers that are just completely white. Marshall Rogers. There we go. The Marshall Rogers and Terry Austin, Doctor Strange, are the ones with all the color holds in them that have never been reprinted because they lost the color holds. Like I said, it's something you don't even have to worry about today with Photoshop, but back in the day, is it, see another silver surfer? No silver inside them. There's no little shiny things, no shiny drawing. Wow, this is interesting stuff though. This, he really is, ha, huh, pointy, pointy nails. Who inked this issue? Did I even look? Is this still? I gotta flip back. Sal Sam is still doing the embellishment. An embellishment often means that um, he's adding stuff that some, like uh, when somebody back in the day was credited as an embellisher, it means he's doing a little bit more work, more work than an inker, but uh, adding uh, more elements than possibly normal. But that, that, that's often what embellishment means. Oh, look at that. Cool stuff. One of five pages in the book, not scanned from the original art. Nice back shot of the silver cheese. And uh, so good at drawing all the, all, all his figure work, John Buscema's figure work. Is, uh, look how fluid that is. And you always believe all the poses. I mean, uh, it's, uh, I mean, the, I don't know how he drew this here. That is one of the most awkward poses I've ever seen and he makes it perfectly believable. If I were to try and draw that, you'd go, what an awkward pose. <laughs> but he pulls it off. I don't know how. It's one of the mysteries of drawing. Once again, there's another, look how strange this Silver Surfer looks without the, uh, the embellishment on him, without the shininess drawn in there. So there, 
there's a there's a little oral history of comics for you that I never knew. And to, may, maybe the story is out there, but I had never heard it before. Before Bob uh, telling me that uh, it was told to him, I had no idea. So now we're back to John. Oh, Dan Atkins is embellishing this one. Another one not. Uh, you can see he's back to his shininess in there. Just look at those. Uh, you can see those shiny lines in the Silver Surfer now. He's drawn like he usually is. I wonder what would have would have looked like with an all color hold Silver Surfer. Once so again, look at all that. Now you start to know. Now I'm starting to notice all that. After looking, after them being gone, I'm starting to notice all the shiny lines. They just jump right out at me. Mephisto, look at that. Look at ink work and drawing on the neck and chin. Wow. That's just easy. He's got forms in there. I I mean, I don't even know if that's anatomically correct, but I 100% believe it. <laughs> because that, he's got like folds and forms and shapes and that's more than I ever seen in a neck. And But man, I believe it. That That's some type of drawing. Nice hand there. Well, this, this this page is all hands. This page is all gestures and hands and wow. So nicely done. Another, I mean, that's not easy. Hands aren't as hard to draw as people seem to think they are, but to draw them that nicely is not easy. People find that, the problem is people find their own shortcuts for drawing hands. And if you copy somebody else's shortcut, you can get lost. Because there's a, a lot of work is put into uh, shortcuts, other people's shortcuts of hands. And if you just, it's, it's amazing how, it, how you can get lost in someone else's shortcuts by not doing them right. Ah, there's, I remember that guy. I think I read this issue. I can't remember his name. But I read the next issue with him in it, that creepy, I, I just think he, I always found that guy extra creepy with his missing hands and missing eye and skull face and he was some uh, ghost pirate ship captain. I like that face, there's those, those eyebrows that shoot off and the wings on the eyes, just a great job. Nope, oh, there's all that tons of silver stuff in the Silver Surfer. Oh, some tape over him. Oh, was it the Flying Dutchman? Was that his name? Yeah, the Flying Dutchman. That was it. Oh, I had a ray beam coming out of his eye. I always found him creepy. Oh, it looks like this was concluded next, taped over this. What a, what a see this this browning is all the rubber cement. Once as soon as you put rubber cement on something, it eventually turns brown. So I guess they pulled it off. Special note from Sam: Big John and I never intended to make this a two-part continued tale. <laughs> all right, but they did additional pages. Oh, I guess these are just some. From issues 1, 7, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Ah, Silver Surfer number 1. John Buscema. Nice, coming out of the hand. I mean, just look at that crouching pose. Wow. That's... I mean, he was just so good with figure work. And, and I love the silver line right on his arm. That's sort of... That's very fluid and... Follows. I mean, I, these are just poses I just wouldn't even think to make, and hardly anybody. The, the, he's just so good with figure work. My fist, there he is with an eye beam coming at you. The Flying Dutchman. Beautiful pages. The Surfer and Spider-Man. These are just the random pages they could find. Oh, there's Spider-Man down there. A little chunky is Spider-Man in that picture. There he is. Those. 
Looks like whoever was inking this was working to get those webs right. I guess they weren't e I guess it was probably wasn't easy to get these webs right if you weren't the regular Spider-Man guy. Cuz it looks like they're all art corrected. There's webs over here that are art corrected. I'm guessing This is webbing that's just lines. I guess uh, the inker wasn't interested in me. Look, once again, someone art corrected all the webbing. Huh. Next, the human torch. Let's see if we get some human torch. Even art corrected all the webbing on the, on the Spider-Man's head. Man, they must have really screwed it up. Must not have been on model. Lots of zip tone on this one. This is the pa the paper that they put down that's a bunch of little dots. That makes a gray when it's printed. It's just little black dots, but the pattern creates a gray in our eyes. The hands of... Wow, that's a beautiful splat. Chick Stone with his big inks. I like that one. What issue is that? Splash 2? Number 1 now. 16? What page is this? Number 16. Wow. Like that. Oh, here was Joe Sinnott, Silver Surfer Cover Gallery. Oh, I guess they did this twice. Wonder why they art corrected it. Hmm. There's the. My favorite, the Flying Dutchman. Creeped me out as a kid. Sky Riders of the Spaceways. All right, there we go. How about that? A nice little look at uh, and some uh, oral history of comics with uh, missing um, collar holds. Okay, I liked it. What a great book. Silver Surfer Arts Edition. You guys all have a good week out there.